Going to take her in, the fire the forge up, we'll let her warm up a tad, and then what we'll do is we'll put the blade in. I'll most probably put it in handle first because it's a thicker section, so I want a bit of heat in that, and then turn it around, put it in the blade first, bring it up to temperature. Um, once I'm happy with that, we'll bring it out and we'll quench her in the fast quench oil. That, that oil is Rye 50. So that comes from Rye Oil, UK based company. That is what they term Parks 50 equivalent. Uh, the Yanks, they rave about Parks. It's, it's almost like a water, but it's um, not as aggressive. It's a bit kinder in the quench. So it acts as a, it's a fast speed quench oil. So that's Rye 50. And in the other tank is Rye 32 Treble A. That's a medium quench. So it's a little bit more viscous, and what it does, that you would use that specifically for O1. So it depends, it's dependent upon the type of steel that I'm using. It depends on what quench I'll stick the, uh, stick the blade in. But this one, because it's almost like 1095, that bar, I'll use the Rye 50. I don't like to put the knife in and then draw it out. I like to leave it in the oil and let the oil do what it's designed to do. Move it so you don't form a vapour jacket down the outsides of the, of the blade, that the oil's in contact with it and it's going to do what it's designed to do and that's to suck the heat out of it as evenly and uniformly as possible. It has to be taken up over that nose at critical temperature. Once you've reached it, and it's got to be brought over between one and two seconds. Once she's cooler, bring her out. Put that back over. So that's it. The blade's been born. It's come to life. That's when it comes to life, it's actually in the quench. Change the internal structure of it. Now you've got material that you can work with that can make a proper functioning knife. Once we've quenched it and it's cooled, we'll have the paragon heated up and we'll heat it to 204 degrees and we'll put the blade in for two hours and we'll temper it. So once we've hardened it, we'll put it in a tempering oven and then you're going to change the, the structure of the material again and you're going to take out the brittleness that's been imparted in the quench and then you're going to impart the toughness. So it's all the alloying elements that are put into the material that give it its specific properties. With the tempering, you're, there's always a trade-off with a knife. It, you know, you could have an edge that's extremely hard, but it could chip. Or you could have an edge that's too soft and it rolls, it doesn't hold its edge. You want to try and get uh, the best, the optimum, from the material and the alloying elements that are put into it to give you those best properties. You know, for a chef's knife, a hard edge is really good, but if you were using it to chop bone, you would need it to be tougher. So it depends upon the, the, the use of the knife, the intended use of the knife, and what you actually want to do with it. Put the 36 grit belt on the, the 2 inch by 72 inch belt grinder and we're going to take the blade and we're going to grind in the primary bevels. Start to turn this into a proper functioning knife now. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, don't forget to give us that thumbs up. If you want us to make more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe so we can let you know when part 3 is coming out and also it helps us and encourages us to make more videos like this. Uh, we will be releasing one every week hopefully in the next coming weeks. So click the bell notification, you'll be one of the first people to know when part 3 will be out. See you on the next video.